All right, I'll call the meeting to order. You want to do roll call? Yes, Tom Duster. Here. Roger Lang. Here. Renee Davis. Here. Dan Wolford. Can you hear him? Ken Hewson. Here. Uh, Kevin Bowden. Here. Hope Bartlett. Here. Chris Huffer. Here. Uh, Heather McIntyre is here. Joe Mahalski. Here. And Holly Valenta. Here. And Cherry of Quorum. All right. Um, let's start with approval of previous month's meeting. Any questions or comments about the last two months ago meeting? Want to approve? Second. All right. Approved and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Are you great? Can we hear you, Dan? Turn him up a little bit. Do I need to speak up? We got gotcha. you. All right. I can. Sound good. Okay. All right, Kevin, you got a report for us? Yes. Um, <coughs> well, at St. Rain, uh, the Lions gate this morning was uh, 707 CFS. Uh, the 125-year historic average is 557 CFS for the state. Um, there is currently no call on the St. Rain. And the call on the South Platte River is Sterling number one, um, which has a priority date of December 31st of uh, 1980. Um, Ralph Price is full and spilling, and uh, Union Reservoirs currently has a gauge height of 27.7 feet, um, which is about uh, three tenths from being full. Um, so it's only 200 acre feet down. Um, you know, just a quick question. Mm -hmm. Full is how much? 20, uh, in terms of gauge height? Eight acre feet. 12,728, I believe. Okay. So it's just down a little bit. Okay. Um, the select St. Brain Reservoirs at the end of May were at 90% of full. Um, the same time last year, they were 91% of full. So about the same place where we were last year. So. Okay. Okay. Any questions for Kevin? Okay, thanks, Kevin. Uh, I guess we're on the public invited to be heard, Kim. Yeah. A special presentation. Thank you. Just one second here. Dan, can you see the presentation? I can, thank you. Perfect. My name is Jamie Simo, and I'm a, one of the founding members of Stand With Our St. Brain Creek, which is a citizen action group um, dedicated to protecting our open spaces, specifically our uh, riparian areas. Um, and we are going to all of our uh, boards, um, going to council, trying to get um, our uh, open space sales tax made permanent. So um, I won't go too long. I know I only have 15 minutes. Um, it shouldn't take that long. Um, so our Longmont open space sales tax, it was approved in 2000. Uh, it was a 0.2 cent sales tax, which means it was uh, it's two cents on every $10 spent. You're currently paying that. It was extended in 2007, um, and it's set to sunset in 2034 unless it's extended further. Um, and I'm here today to ask that you make a motion recommending to city council that they support a permanent extension of the open space sales tax on the November 2024 ballot. <coughs> So why? I'm going to move you, Dan. Okay. Um, so this, like I said, it's not a new tax. Uh, this is not an additional financial burden on residents. Uh, there is precedent for having uh, a permanent open space sales tax here in Colorado. Uh, Lafayette voters overwhelmingly voted to make their open space sales tax permanent in 2018. I believe it was 82%. And then Adams County in 2020 also overwhelmingly made their open space sales tax permanent. Um, having a permanent uh, reliable funding source is important um, given uh, the explosive growth that Longmont has experienced in the last few years and the increasing challenges of wildfires and water scarcity due to climate change. <coughs> so why now? Um, it does sunset in 2034, so why are we asking now? Uh, that's because this is a presidential election year. Um, that means that there's going to be a greater voter turnout, so we're hoping to get more people to actually um, tune into this and vote, yes or no. 
Uh, Longmont residents are concerned about ramp rampant development now. Um, if we wait, um, then there might not be anything to acquire or you know, maintain. Um, and having a permanent rev revenue stream allows us to, um, or allows city staff to do some long range planning for um, their parks and acquisitions and maintenance and such. Um, so why are we asking for your support? Um, so open space funds go to a number of different things, um, but specifically for, for you, um, it's acquiring water rights uh, to keep water in our rivers and creeks and enhance stream flows. Um, healthy functioning riparian areas do provide a wildlife habitat, but it also works to decrease flooding. Um, we had that terrible flood in 2013. So having healthy riparian areas helps stabilize banks and slow floodwaters. So in the event that we have more floods, which we probably will, um, uh, open space sales tax money will help to, to um, make sure that the damage is not as bad as it was in 2013. Um, protecting the health of Longmont's watershed, um, which provides our drinking water, so um, specifically Button Rock Preserve, Ralph Price Reservoir up there. And um, it also goes toward managing our forests to protect forest health and prevent our forest fires. So um, we have done outreach to the public. Uh, I have 962 and counting um, uh, signatures on our appeal. Um, we've done uh, Earth Day. We're going to be doing Juneteenth. We've done Art Walk. Um, so a number of different avenues that we've collected signatures from people. Um, we're also going to the different advisory boards. Um, so we've already been to Parks and Recreation, and they unanimously voted to support the recommendation to council. And we've um, been to Sustainability, and they also unanimously voted to support it. Um, and we're going to the Transportation Advisory Board on July 15th. And we hope to also get in a unanimous uh, recommendation. So again, uh, we are asking that you make a motion today uh, recommending to City Council that they support a permanent extension of Longmont's open space sales tax on the November 2024 budget. Thank you. Any questions concerning comments that were made? There we go. <laughs> you know, I hate to be a, a, a spoiler, but I don't I don't think it's our purview to approve things like this. I, I just don't think it's in our business. Oh, well, I'm that. not asking you to approve uh, this. I'm asking I, you to recommend to City Council yeah. that they go ahead and... I have a problem with doing that. Okay. I just, not that we wouldn't support it, but just, I just don't think, I think City Council needs to make the decision, and I... I just am uncomfortable okay. making a motion to approve it. I, I don't want to be a. Oh. Not, not I guess I see it as you providing advice. You're advising them that this would be a good idea. I rather know. Than telling them. I know. So. Okay. I, I remember other instances, right, of other organizations coming, and I'll. I'll I'm certainly willing to um, have my mind changed here, but I, I think at the time the, the same conclusion was made in those instances as well, where the water board saw a, a disconnect or something between our the business that we have at hand relative to kind of making recommendations that are outside the kind of things that we have on our list, I suppose. Um, and I don't, I don't know if others recall it differently or not, but I do seem to remember one at least one or two years ago or something where we came to the same conclusion, I thought, where it was decided that as individuals, we were happy to help, um, but as, as, as a water board, maybe, maybe not, not falling under that kind of umbrella. And so, I don't know, Ken, Heather, do you, anybody remember such instances? I don't remember, I'm okay. sorry. I think there was, okay, I'll have to look back in my notes. I, I don't remember because I don't think it was on the board at the time, but I'm also was the, on the board for 10 the years previous, yeah. and, and this doesn't actually seem out of character okay. to things that we would be asked about. Um, I think we are a public venue, so it's good to hear about it. So come on back, you might have a look. Um, so it's good to hear about it and good to talk about it. Um, yeah. I also think that like when we're talking about watershed health, um, that does spark as something that feels to me very close to our mandate. I know we spend a lot of time and energy worrying about but not preserve. Um, and looking for public support there for various things. So it, to me, it does feel like a fit. 
Yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm open to having the discussion, certainly. Dan, you got your hand raised? Sure. Again, from my perspective, I certainly see our role as advising council. This whole process um, in the open space program certainly has implications for the water board and for the general public. Um, I believe it, it is our place to make those recommendations, especially since this group um, of which I'm you know part of to provide that insight and make those recommendations um, I, Roger I would say it's no different than the parks board or the sustainability board or the transportation board open space works collaboratively with these groups and I think it's a plus plus across the board whether it's any of these individual organizations or, or council or the community so uh, i i do believe it is our place to make some recommendations to council well i'm just saying i'm gonna i'm comfortable with doing it because i just don't think it's in our business i i you know to come to us to ask for a recommendation on a vote, I, I'm just a little bit uncomfortable with doing that. Well, it's not really a vote, it's just getting it on the ballot so other people can vote, so the yeah. community can vote on it. So sure. we're not saying one way or the other whether, you know, council should support it, just that it gets put on the vote so that, or put on the ballot. Okay, let me ask you, it, it, it sunsets when? 2034. And why are you wanting it now? Um, like I said, it's a presidential election year, that's the number one thing. So they're asking for maximal input. Right. To interrupt. Because Sorry. if it doesn't get on the ballot this year, we still have a chance to put it on the ballot in another four years. So so in the instance that we were to vote in the affirmative of supporting city council putting, putting it on, it on the right. ballot, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're not asking you personally to vote for it. Yeah. Uh, just I'm just I'm just curious about like about whether or not that so at some point it's turned into water board supports the ballot measure, <coughs> right? So like those are two different things, right? That we support that, that there should be a ballot measure mm -hmm. for the public to vote sure. relative to we support, hey, public, we think you should vote, right? Or, or vote on, vote yes for this or whatever. Uh, I can't see that it would be any different than sustainability or parks and rec, I mean. That no, I know, I'm just, I'm just wondering like how it would get framed. Right. Are you planning on coming back and asking for us to endorse it once it's on the ballot? We we just want it on the ballot. Okay. Yeah. So it's not it's not like you're coming back with the endorsement that's on the ballot. What, what's the problem with it getting on the ballot now? I mean. Uh, well, we're trying to shore up all of loose ends, um, making it basically a no brainer for city council to do. I mean, are you trying to obtain signatures or? Do you have enough signatures? This is not a formal petition, this is an appeal. So we're presenting it to City Council. We're actually going to be going uh, on the 25th to City Council and say, hey, you know, we've got this, we've got the, you know, the recommendation from these boards. Um, do this. Please do this. Please put it on the top. So. And when are you presenting to City Council? The 25th. Uh, July. This month. Of oh, June. Mm -hmm. ah, so you need our answer now. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of a tight turnaround to, to get things on the ballot. And there are other moving pieces, other things that we don't. We think that this is pretty pretty easy sell. Um, we have not had to twist anybody's arm to get them to sign. They are willing and ready and willing to sign. Um, we have some city council support already, but uh, obviously they need to make it, you know, make the motion to put it on the ballot. I don't have a problem with it being on the ballot. I just have a problem saying you should vote for it, city council. But we're we're but city but council's voting. They're just just for them to make the motion to put it on the ballot. So city council, city council's only job here is to say yes, we should put it on the ballot so the public can vote on it. Correct. Yeah, we're not asking city council to vote for it. We're not asking 
people to vote for it. Obviously, we would prefer that they voted for it, but we just want to give them the opportunity to vote on it. And we think that like Adams County, like Lafayette, uh, they will overwhelmingly support it because it's not a new tax. Uh, they're already paying it. It's actually less than many other municipalities. Anybody want to make a motion? Yeah, I move that we um, recommend to City Council to put this on the ballot for everyone else to vote on. There a second? I'm happy to second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You need half a second. Um, I'm an eye. Yeah. But I, I, I will say that I would like it to be very <coughs> carefully framed, right? But I, I don't think that it should be framed as the water board supports the ballot measure at this point, because sure. I do think that we need a broader discussion about water board does such things. But I do, I think it's, I think it's okay to say to city council that water board is in support of the public voting right. on this. So that would be my only request. Sure. I'll say aye. Sounds like we've got four eyes, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Motion carried. Any questions? Thank you. Appreciate mm -hmm. your time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Thanks. Okay. Maybe worthy of a future one of on our future discussion list of whether just broader yeah. comments about whether or not because like I said I, I, I remember a conversation before and now I can look back in my notes to see what that conversation was actually but um, so anyway it may be worth you uh, chatting about such things to give us some idea of what to do in the future yeah I guess I'd say before something like this comes on our agenda. Let's discuss it before it gets on our agenda. Okay. Okay. We have a little discussion. Okay. Very good. Any agenda revisions or submission of documents? I have none. Okay. Development activity, none and none. Then in business. We've been waiting for this for a while. <laughs> Cash and loose. Cash and loose. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of queue it up a little bit here. There's actually three, three items underneath the general cash and lieu today. First off is our quarterly cash and lieu review. Um, I think we've talked in the past about the um, parent unique out pro uh, pumping project. Um, a lot of the units that um, the power authority put out for uh, open bid. Uh, and they were not successful in selling all five the um, units. They were success successful in selling three of the five. Really? I wonder. How would you explain that? Um, two, two of the um, units were the high bidder was a metropolitan district. And um, that went to the northern board, and they're not sure they're going to allow the metropolitan. And I understand. <coughs> I, I think they're going to allow the metropolitan district to own Windy Gap. Okay, who wants to watch the three? Um, Merthed and Little Thompson, I believe. Okay. Right. And, you know, that's pretty easy to you know where the water's going. All right. You know, you know it's standard. Okay. So, so, uh, so to speak. So there was obviously demand for the units. What? So they were unsuccessful in selling them, not because there wasn't demand, but because the board didn't approve the buyer. The board did not approve that. And I, I believe the board may even think about that further, the northern board, but they're not, they're not there yet. Okay. You know, that happened. But anyway, at any rate. Um, those did sell for about $40,000 a unit. Um, as you may recall, the last time we set, um, two years ago, um, the most recent sale had been $30,000 a unit, or an acre foot. 
excuse me, uh, three million versus four million a, a unit. Um, as such, um, the and then we we've brought in the past the um, change uh, expected future change order costs for the when you got firming project. Um, we currently have that cost at eighteen thousand five hundred and about another thousand dollars in change orders per acre foot. Um, so that would bring that to nineteen five, uh, which is. Really not a huge increase, honestly, for a project of that scale. So between um, the, the confirmed sales for PRPA and the uh, expected windy gap firming project costs, and those are those are actually not those firming project costs have not been realized yet, but we've been the project's been doing a forward look at any any potential change orders, and that's really really the best estimate right now. So all of those um, come up to uh, 59,625 per acre foot when you add the 40 and the 19. Um, so at this point, staff would recommend that the board would consider, you know, based upon our current criteria of using the Windy Gap Firming Project as the uh, metric uh, for cash and loot. Revising this to 59,625. Well, one thing I have um, for, for others who uh, ask, a lot of people <laughs> obviously are interested in knowing where this might go and, and what it might be, um, including our um, management of the city and, and planning departments and developers. Uh, you know, this is probably, this is going to be pretty close. You know, I don't, I don't expect any big jumps in the future because we are really close to, to feeling like we've got a real final cost for the um, Chimney Hollow project. And even if there's some change orders, it, you know, it's not gonna significantly jump it up. And uh, I, don't, um, I don't know of any other Windy Gap sales that will be coming out anytime soon. PRPA indicated they might wait as much as five years before they put those two units back on the market. Although it probably might be a little sooner than that, but, but it'll be a while before they put those back on the market. And so uh, I, I would expect this, this price to uh, stick for a little while, which is really what a lot of the concern was, is how often we, we change. So um, at this point, um, we feel the, the market indicates that we should be at that so, uh, you don't foresee costs down the road from the firming part of it that like a year from now you don't see any costs coming in or you don't know really if they're coming in or not? Uh, we obviously don't know. You're, you're I mean there could not. be a possibility that costs will come in within a year's time that might adjust this number. Yes, um, absolutely. And certainly there will be continuing change orders as you're working on a project of that massive a scale. Um, we are done with almost everything on, on a reservoir project that is more unknown. You know, at this point we know, you know, the rock isn't gonna change. You know, the, uh, the foundation's done. In fact, just finished the foundation on the saddle dam as well. <coughs> so the foundations are done, that's the real critical part of the dam never knowing what that's going to be like. Um, the process is, is well established now, about two-thirds of, two of the way up on the height of the dam, and two-thirds of the way completed with the project. So um, most of the, most of everything is, is pretty well set. So yeah. Hey, let me just ask you, say Plant River decides next year to sell one share and then share sales. Would we use that to adjust this? If it were just one share, I, I, I think the board would want to look at what they just sold it out versus just one sh one unit coming out. Um, but yes, the board could certainly... But, but that's really the trigger that, that 
part of this is of this cost of shares sold. Yeah. yeah. So I'm yeah. not trying to pin you down at one share sell, but it's something we're going to have to look at. Yeah. So that's, that's um, you've got two factors in this thing, and that's share selling and cost of completing a project. And, and I would be concerned on a similar note that if, a, if they don't sell the shares for another five years, are we still keeping up with where costs may be? Um, but that's maybe a problem for another time. No, I, I think that's a good point. Yeah. I mean, it's not everything stays the same and water doesn't cost more. That'd be so neat. We've tied, <laughs> well, we've tied to works. these two indicators yeah. and uh, that kind of makes you feel like it's frozen now. In a way, even though prices might be going up, I, I, I think that's a problem for next year. But I think it's yeah. good to say that we're not committing to never changing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah don't say never again. <laughs> Cost may go up. Tom, well, I was just going to say that, like my, I, I think you know when when I first came on the board, we had lots of discussions about cash and loot immediately, and I was lost the whole time <laughs> practically. But but nevertheless, I was. Trying to keep up, and I remember the language being something like the next kind of like some, something about the next reasonably foreseeable acre foot of water, right? Like how much is that thing going to cost, right? And <coughs> the question that I have that may inform some of this discussion is like, at what point do we do we what would we do if suddenly we needed, right? If suddenly we needed, you know, I don't know how many, well, 100 acre foot of water or something. I mean, it's a pretty little amount, but. But if suddenly we needed a whole bunch of water, or some water, right? What would we do? Would we? What would I mean? I think I mean, to some degree, I mean, we'd probably try to conserve. We'd try to try to try to do some other things, right? We're bait, and and we locked ourselves into thinking about okay, well, what's the market price of some of this um, windy gap water, right? And so, so, and I'm fine with that. Don't don't get me wrong. I, I'm I'm on board with that decision, right? I don't think we should start calculating how much it costs to conserve water or something like that instead. But, but what I'm saying is like, at some point our mindset will shift to like what the next project is or something, right? That that is going to secure the next allotment of water that we need into the future or something. And I'm just kind of curious, like, when we might do that essentially, or whether legit the next time that we needed water, whether we participate in one of these auctions, right? Whether that's like a realistic sense of how we actually get get water or not, right? And so I guess I'm wondering about like what at what trigger point do we start thinking about like other parameters that might inform these discussions? Well to that point, you know, we got, you know, you can enlarge button rock. I mean there's several options if we want more need more water pump back that's another option um i don't know all that i mean there there are things on the table that we can do if we need to to get yeah. an increase but, these sources. but opening this discussion to those things really complicates these factors i would imagine right well i mean again this is me speaking to the history and i wasn't here for the last big raise um and the change, but prior to that, we had a different means of calculating the rates. Yeah. It, it's possible to do it different ways. Mm -hmm. There is not one one reasonable way to do this. There are many reasonable ways to do this, as long as we're reasonable about it and give people warning. Um, we can do a lot of things. Um, so I, I just I, I don't know that we need to worry about next year's calculation as much as we need to worry about this year's calculation. Yeah. Well, I, and I think you might be getting into this next, but as far as our scheduling, the time frames and stuff, I think that's one thing we want to kind of firm up. Yeah. When and how, and uh, in my thought process, it's going to be a year from now before we actually tie into this thing, if we firm this thing up now. Uh, I, the assumption, I think, is if we go ahead with this, it will actually go to city council with the idea that the effectiveness will be the first of next year. Is that yeah, is that that's, correct? That's, Everybody understand it that way. That's the proposal. So, yeah, yeah. So anyway, I, I might be getting ahead of myself, but anyway. Um, so Ken, what are you looking for for us to approve this 
them on, or do you want to talk about the other things, or do you want to take this piece at a time? Um, I'd like to, yeah, I'd like to take a piece of time. I'd like, I think we're ready, at least staff is ready to make that recommendation to the board that we set that cash in the price at 59, 625. And um, whatever we do with the rest of the ish items, okay. All I, right. I, think, I think we can tackle that one. Uh, well, okay. Anybody have any concerns? And Dan, you're still there. Good. About this proposal from staff to take it to 59.625. You got any questions or comments, Dan? No, I think it, it makes sense, and this is what our expenses are to do it. That's kind of been the direction that council's given us to come up with. So, I, I would I would move that we, if or or second way, if. You're already making that recommendation, Roger, but I would recommend that we approve this staff's recommendation at 59.625, break a foot. Any other comments for him? I'll take that as a motion, Dan. Mm -hmm. Sure. And uh, somebody want to make a second on it? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Now Maria is a yeah. Is a yeah. I was, you were comfortable with everything. I was waiting for you so, to be comfortable. Okay. No, um, I'm 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 good, and I I, I do I want to thank staff for. Uh, I think that we've we've been patient in the sense of like waiting for the pieces to fall into place to have a a good rationale for for any number that we settled on, and I've appreciated that that we haven't put the cart before the horse here. We waited for the numbers, we got them, we have an approach, we implemented it, and now I feel like yeah. I'm, I'm comfortable no, I'm, with the result. So. Okay, so it's been a motion and a second. All in favor, signify saying aye. Uh, aye. 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 Okay, thank you very much. Um, the second half part of the cash in the conversation we wanted to have is, is the scheduling. And so in the water board write-up, we proposed um, a schedule. Uh, one of the one of the issues that we've been hearing about for some time now is is unique, kind of sort of uniquely with Cash and Lou. Once you know, once water board makes the recommendation, we take it to the next available council meeting. It's passed by a resolution, which makes it basically passes it immediately, as opposed to an ordinance, which takes two meetings and you know, a public notice and then a 10 day waiting period and all that. So it happens pretty quickly after Water Board makes that decision. Um, and, and some in the development community have said, we understand that the, the cost goes up, but for us, we're, we're trying, you know, it takes us a while to bring projects to fruition and, and it take, you know, we need time to react to that. Um, the second half of that, um, kind of from the administrative standpoint, is um, it's common um, when we do, uh, say, a rate change. You know, if we if we do a water rate change, that's approved, but it's usually effective January first. And so um, the request was that we make um, our ch cash and lieu change of a. Uh, predictable in, in terms of time. Um, a little more time between the recommendation and when it becomes effective. And then um, also get it uh, kind of on the schedule and in line with other types of fee uh, changes and in, usually increases. Um, cash is really unique in that we actually many times have gone down. Right? You know, not just out, but we go down as well. Um, and so um, if we go down, they'll probably want us to do it sooner. But <laughs> down, down. Uh, yeah. Same way. Same way. <laughs> Keep talking up here a little bit. But uh, no, one option we thought so our city code um, requires water board review at least quarterly. Sometimes it's actually been more than quarterly. There's a period where CBT was just going crazy, and when CBT was one of the metrics we used, Water Board asked that we review it more than quarterly just to kind of track that. Um, in, in this case, quarterly is more than sufficient because the windy gap in the parent project, they don't change that much. 
And honestly, it's been two, you know, it's been a little over two years now since the last change, so it doesn't concern me that um, we, we have a set schedule. But what we would propose is, now we can go in and change city code, that just requires two ordinances, but what we would what we would suggest, at least staff would be more comfortable if we at least continue to review cash and quarterly, and that way if some weird, you know, something wild comes up, uh, you know, you're not saying, oh, we're gonna wait till next June. But what we would what we propose is the normal quarterly meeting in June um, is when we, the water board would make the recommendation to council. Um, we'd be able to take that, we'd follow, rather than, we normally kind of push it up on the agenda, get it, get it. we have a sort of unwritten rule of three months to put it, item on the council agenda and but we can push it a little bit <laughs> we normally push cash and lieu but we would follow that three month rule so we at water board would review it in june make a recommendation we take that to city council in september which makes it a little easier for us to get it through the city attorney's office and get it all on the agenda and get everything done council would make that um, determination in september and make it effective on January 1st. That gives the development community a full six months to be prepared for it, to, to um, get either non historical water or um, pay the current cash and loan fee. Um, you know, it does take longer than that for development projects to move forward, but, but that gives them plenty of time to plan ahead. So um, staff is recommending that we basically Review it quarterly, and, and you certainly, we certainly can make recommendations anytime, but we would normally just review it, know where we're at, and then make a recommendation in June, council review in September, and make it effective on January 1st. You know, in fairness to the developers, and I'm not trying to be overly fair, but I think the predictability to say there's going to be a cash and loot change is going to happen the first year. To me, that makes a lot of sense. I, I think what we've done, there's been some surprises and people grouse about that, but that makes sense to do that. And us decide on it in June if there's going to be any changes and just say it's going to be a, going forward, we're going to try and make it effective. Any change is effective the first of the year. I don't have a problem with that. I, I think that's reasonable. And it's basically what you're suggesting to us. Yeah. So, anyway. How about any other comments with what they're proposing? I like the idea of continuing the quarterly review. Um, I think that's actually really essential because we have, just following it this last year, it's been following it. Like we've really had a lot of information, a lot of changes, and if if we hadn't had those stepwise changes, I think we would feel, I would feel underinformed and a little bit like, what, where'd this come from? So I think quarterly is powerful. Mm -hmm. um, I'm understanding your timeline of working back from the September meeting you know, September gets the January 1st and working back from that. But I'm also going to point out Scott's not here <laughs> because June and summer meetings on this board are typically a little less attended. So I'm not opposed to June, but I think it's something maybe we should put an asterisk in. This is a next year problem I want to discuss this year. And that is, yeah, I think we should be thoughtful about that and see how it goes. Because if we end up with short boards, um, I want to make sure we have maximal boards for approving this. Um, we approved it today without Scott here, obviously, and we, we've got a quorum. But I want us to keep it in mind because we're kind of putting all of our eggs in the June basket. And if three people go on vacation, we don't have a meeting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, it, it becomes, I guess, the July meeting. <laughs> but it's, it's one of those things. I think we should be smart about that. But other than that, I like it. I thought those were awesome points, um, and first of all, everything here that was said, I, I completely agree with. Um, I do very much would be adamant about still discussing it quarterly, um, just to kind of like, oh, okay, that's where we're at. Oh, okay, that's where, even if it's no no vote, no decision, no nothing, it's just where are we right now, right? Because. Um, packing that in, you know, packing an entire year's worth of like change or something into one discussion, especially if it's in the summer, um, would be yeah. way too much. And so, you know, to be cognizant of that, right? Like, even something, what would that be? The 
uh, was that March, I guess. Even in the March discussion, if we've come to some kind of like, you know, we have some data points that we can work with and we're all kind of uh, in the same, um, you know, same realm or something, then I, I don't know how remote voting or something goes if you're not going to be absent or something on a Zoom mm, meeting, but, but maybe we could, if nothing has changed since the last time we talked about it in March or something, then maybe it would be a quick little approval or something. But, but when it's all said and done, yeah, I, I think um, the, it's important to discuss periodically, but I think that the, out, the schedule that you've laid out is great. Yeah. Comments? I'm on board with this process. I think the timing is good, especially as the city approximately this June month, cities are looking at fees and revenue streams and that kind of stuff. And certainly making the recommendation in June gives our ability to have conversation with council if needed uh, based on that recommendation. So I like the way staff has laid out this process. Okay. Yeah. Chris had a comment. Sorry. Chris. I was just going to say that I think that you have the option also to call special meetings if you can't get quorum on one okay. day. So you could do the following week or a couple of weeks out or something like yeah. that. So, so does the the June timeline to then lead into a September city council meeting? <coughs> is that like? Is there buffer room in there? So, for yes. example, if we didn't vote, if we weren't able to vote on it until July, you'd still be able to get it on yes. the, the September yeah. city council yes. meeting. So, I mean, there's a little bit of like leeway or something. There. Yeah. So that would be another. Yeah. The, the other thing, Ken goes without saying, but the firming thing keep us apprised of costs and stuff because that's probably going to be the lever that adjusts it. In my mind, I, if there's no sales for a year, there's no sales, but you're going to have to keep us up to date on that, so. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll absolutely keep you up to date on any, who know, you know, other entities may do something. Okay. Uh, none that I know of right now, but yeah. No, but hey. We'll certainly, certainly. we got another year to look at things as they, you know, happen, so. Yeah. You want a motion on this? I don't need a motion unless you want to change the code. No, I, I, I think, don't think changing code is. <laughs> That's never fun. I okay. get it. It's not a Okay, fair enough. So I, we agree with what you're saying. Gives me the direction I need on that. So thank you very much. And then the final item was our cash, the overall cash and lieu review process. Um, I just wanted mostly to give you an update. So, what we're going to do in, in each one of our cash every quarter. We're going to, or any other month that we bring this item before the board, we're going to kind of stack the communication. We're going to re replicate the information that we have already given you so that when we're done, we have a full and complete um, picture, mostly for those that are you know, not on the board or not in here. Um, we feel this is going to be a really good kind of historical perspective and, and get a lot of it. So we don't have much new information this month because we're at a point where we need to get some studies done and get a bunch of research done. Um, what, for example, we need to, I'd like to get the actual money we've spent for cash and move all through the program because um, I do hear some different, um, not, not every, People would like to know what, what the money was spent on, not just what did we collect, but what was it spent on. And, and uh, I'll, so I'll, we'll continue to do that. We're going to get additional information. You know, what are some of the other cities? I, I never like to follow what other cities, you know, what other people are doing. It's unique to Longmont, but, but it's still good to have that information. So as we put those studies together, we'll continue to feed that into the, to the water board packet and into water board. And, Again, we still, we're, we're hoping to get um, most of this all together by early next year. And, and if Water Board wants to make any changes in the program, at that point, I recommend any we can do that. But you, got any, you got any concerns that somebody will say, we gave you about 12 questions to answer, and you're just in the cash and loop before you answered all our questions? I, I don't because we're, making the recommendation based on our current criteria 
And honestly, we, while well, I've been around about once every 10 years, we change, I mean, change the criteria. Um, we had the last 10 years, we had a criteria that was just the firming project, because that's where the money's going to right now. It was a reasonable criteria. Um, we changed it now, I'll call it in the 2020s. <laughs> um, prior to 2010, about 2010, um, for about 15 years, we used um, CBT primarily, um, but CBT, as you all know, <laughs> took off. Um, and so it doesn't bother me that, that we do or don't have some other things. I think we're very, very well founded in the criteria we're using right now, and yeah, I think it's a very good criteria. Again, because that's where the money's going you know, um, right now, <coughs> cash and loop is going to pay for the uh, um, bonds that we've issued. Well, you're going to sell it, so. Yeah, I, I think we can sell it. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a very good, very good. No, I think, I think it's fundamentally very solid what we're doing. Just the thing, all these questions that, you know, like should there be cash in the going, you know, I mean, it kind of bothers me a little bit where that's going, but anyway, I just don't want, I hope not, you know, somebody saying, you know, he didn't complete all the discussion. Didn't I just didn't gave you. Yeah, I think so, uh, so we'll see. Okay. Good. So that's all I had on cash and loot. I did. I, I had a question actually. Um, uh, the, uh, the document here is uh, sprinkled throughout. Is it has been expressed or some other other uh, diplomatic passive voice type language? Um, is there is there a a universal entity that we can fill in the blanks with there? Like who is expressing these things? Um, sometimes it's developers, I would imagine. Sometimes it's others. But. Actually, it came down to us from uh, the city manager's office, um, and the and I'm going to say it wrong. The city has a. I can't even think of the name of the title. The person that's kind of looking over the sugar mill, um, the entire larger sugar mill, uh, they call it STEM uh, and, uh, mm -hmm. project. Um, the development coordinator. Development coordinator, there we go. That's <laughs> a good name. <laughs> um, that person was very concerned about what cash, cash and would mean to the sugar mill pro project. Mm -hmm. Why? Because Great Western Sugar, when they were going bankrupt, sold their water off. Mm -hmm. So you're sitting, so you're uniquely sitting with a very large parcel of property with no water rights at all sitting on it. Got it. Uh, and, you know, yes, it will impact them a little more. Until you look at what it actually costs per unit, and that's some of the information we'll bring back to the board, but it, it's not much. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the per unit cost is yeah. still, even though cash and lieu may be in a certain area, it's still far less than, than many other places. So is that, I'm sorry, I know. I'm, I'm I actually, know. can I just of course, second yeah. what you started with, and that is, I'm reading this and there's a lot of vague people out there saying things, like staff is curious, and I would really like to remind everyone that this is a public meeting, they can come here and say it. Because I have to come here and say it with my face and my name tag, yeah. <laughs> uh, and you know whatever diplomacy I may have. But you know, so I when you brought it up, I was really glad because it kind of yeah. checked my hide. Um, because I would like to know who's saying what and be responding to it. I'm okay with that, okay. but they need to also kind of own it. It helps with like just understanding perspective. Perspective you know, and like I want to know who it is so that I know their view, their okay. viewpoint and yeah, and I can say who they are, right? Like in a way, like like well, th this group of people says this, and this group of people said like if there's multiple viewpoints here, this group of people says this, and this one has a contrary opinion, and I want to like weigh my perspective against what. You know where they're coming from. You yep. know? And and so yeah, that that's why I brought that up. Um, the, I, I'm I'm interested because you had brought it up. Can the cost per unit that you calculated that was because 
I, I have to sit down and actually do a calculation myself because I'm like that hands on that or in that way, I guess. But that that cost per unit is is supported in a, in a way because there were historical water rights on these pieces of the property, though, right? So, like in their unique situation, it's not going to be twenty two hundred dollars a unit or twenty three hundred dollars a unit. Yeah. It'll be much, much greater more, yeah. because they don't have any, right? Okay. So, so it'd be, uh, you know, it'd be, it'd be a whole lot higher, given that seventy percent of the deficit, okay, deficit paid by. We can, we could bring in some estimates on yeah. that. So, you know, what, based so, upon zoning, we could bring in estimates of <coughs> what it would cost per unit. But. A large majority of it was paid by cash and lieu and not with historical. Is that what I'm saying? Um, anyway, um, when it's all said and done, yeah, I'd, I'd like to see a little, or even just even some um, some uh, examples, right? Yeah. Like, what would it be in this particular instance, right? Like, what is the cost per unit in that particular instance? Yeah, if you really need to sell it, or is this ten thousand? If they have no water at all, yeah, right. and yeah. they they. The easiest thing for a developer is to write a check, to be real honest. That's yeah. why they like cash and litter. So a developer, if, a, if they have no water and it's three acre feet per acre, it's 150, well now if it, if it goes up, it'll be 180,000 yeah, 180, per acre. Yeah. And you divide it by, you know, anywhere it from 15 to probably 50 to 100. I don't know, what's the high density? Yeah. yeah. I guess 77, I think, is one of the highest. 77 units 77 per acre. Per acre. Per acre. So, you know, if you, a higher density brings that number way down. Yeah. Uh, okay. you know, single, single family, yeah. Okay. Well, we can bring that. That's real easy to yeah, sure. bring that in. To, it helps put it into perspective. Yeah, absolutely. What we were trying to do here was just well, what actually happened <laughs> yeah, yeah. in the last no, 10 it's, years. It's so good. Yeah. These types of like but little data and things things are perfect. Yeah. So we'll, we'll bring all of that in. Yeah. Can, can I just interject a couple things? Uh, one thing was that I wanted to say, yes, that we are seeing much higher density coming in now than we've ever seen in the past. So comparative to 10, 20, 30 years ago, the cost per unit is changing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Just based on the type of development coming in. So. It may self-adjust. The average is probably not the bad average if it's being shown. Um, the other thing that I just wanted to interject to is that staff here is part of the city, and we're, we're all part of the city, and our job is to represent all the different parts of the city. Not to say that anybody couldn't come in and speak, right. um, and that we would encourage them to come in and speak, but, but we really are here to represent all of the different views at this point. The, uh, speaking of density, I assume the developers are living within the parameters we set for density. Uh, yes, they're usually on the lower end of all of the spectrum. But they have not pushed up to the higher end of the spectrum in any of the zoning areas. Is that what your question was? I was just kind of curious about if the density is increasing considerably over what it has been. Our guidelines, I would hope, you know, are they pushing against our max on density allowed? They're not. No. In 2016, when we adopted the Vision Longmont, that changed all of the density requirements. So there have been, uh, I guess I don't want to say several, there have been projects that have come in that were not dense enough. And city council has turned them away and told them to relook at what they've done uh, <coughs> to bring in more density to meet whatever their zoning requirements were. I don't believe there's anybody that's come in that's come close to okay. hitting the maximum right. densities. Okay. Any other comments for Ken about what we discussed? Well, that's great. I appreciate that input. And we'll continue to bring. Um, all this information back. Keep looking at it. <laughs> All right. Very good. Okay. Back with this exchange agreement. Yeah, we have uh, before you today a reasonably standard um, 
exchange agreement. As the board may recall, our charter doesn't allow us to sell water without a vote of the public, but our charter does allow us to exchange water rights. And um, we don't exchange water rights too often, but we occasionally do. Um, the last big, kind of big one I recall is Golden Ponds. Um, we exchanged our Copeland Lake facility, the reservoir itself, not all the property, um, for half interest in Golden Ponds with the St. Raymond Left and Water Conservancy District. Um, we also, we owned uh, Independent Reservoir, which is just south of the Cole Lake. We exchanged that for some CBT water and got a really good deal out of that. Because <laughs> see, that was right before CBT went up. Um, but what we have today is um, when Boulder County Fairgrounds purchased the property for the fairgrounds, that property was historically irrigated out of the Beckwith Ditch. And the, so the county got the both land and um, 1.66 shares of the Beckwith Ditch. But today it's either <coughs> the fairground <coughs> complex itself and the parking lot. So there's, there's, you know, that hasn't been irrigated for 30 years. But they do, they do, do still have um, those shares uh, sitting there. Um, Longmont, you may recall, we just last year completed um, a change case for the bonus ditch, which diverts out um, behind Best Buy and over Dickens Farm. We completed that change case, and our next change case we're plan planning on doing is the Beckwith ditch itself. We, we owned, um, in the late 1980s, we changed half of the, we owned half the Beckwith ditch shares, and we changed those shares at that time, and then we've been assembling shares since then, as, as most of the south side of Longmont has grown. We now own um, essentially the entire ditch. With the exception, um, there, there's the Boulder County shares. There's one share owned, believe it or not, by the Safeway store over here. <laughs> uh, just kind of got left on that property in Annex, like in the mid 1960s, and it was left on that property. And then there's two small shares owned by developers who purchased them for non historical. So essentially, the Beckwith ditch will no longer divert water uh, down the ditch. It hasn't actually diverted water in probably over 10 years, so that's no, no change there. Um, for Longmont to be able to own the last little remnant shares and take the entire ditch to, to uh, water court is very beneficial to us. Uh, in addition, there's been a long-standing community desire to get fish passage, eliminate the, by eliminating the diversion structure there at Golden Ponds, you're able to get fish passage and make a more natural channel through there. Um, and changing all the water out of the ditch will help us do that. So we've been having a conversation with Boulder County. Um, Boulder County has a bunch of open space east of Longmont, south of, well, east, east of Costco. They're out, out to County Line Road 1. They're a little water short on that, and that's, that's actually fed by the bonus ditch. So the county's really interested in getting a little bit more bonus ditch water um, for those properties, and of course we're interested in getting the, the Beckwith um, water for, for us. That gives the county what water they can use on their open space, which is a benefit to them, so it's much more valuable to them to get the bonus. For us, the Beckwith is actually much more valuable to us. Um, we were able to change the bonus shares, and we can use them downstream, but they couldn't be moved upstream because of their location on the stream and the extended period of time in summer when there's a zero flow uh, that, they're, um, that they're on return flows. Um, and the, for us, the Beckwith Ditch is like the senior ditch, I mean, one little tiny ditch out east. It's basically the senior ditch, so you always have the senior ditch. So for us, we get a, a more senior ditch. We're able to move at times some of the Beckwith water up to our plants because it exists east, west of Walmart, as opposed to bonus, which um, is east. So we get more functional water, we get uh, more senior water right, and uh, 
we are able to further some of our community goals with protecting the river. So um, we're, we're doing just a straight acre foot for acre foot exchange with the county. Um, and uh, But we do need to go uh, and get approved, resolution approved by the city council to approve um, an exchange. Um, the county has already agreed to it. I'm ready to, we're all ready to sign. Or, just go through the, through the approval processes. So staff would um, make a recommendation to board, uh, forward a recommendation to council to approve an uh, exchange with the county for Longmont to get the Beckwith shares. So this is beneficial to the county and it's beneficial to us? It is, yes. It's really a win for It's a no-brainer, it sounds like. Yeah, we, we think so. But Just out of um, interest how many of the goals that you outlined there that or the benefits that we receive there's a couple of other people still on the Beckwith ditch it sounds like so you said that. there are there, there there would be three others but two of them are developers so they're just waiting to move their development process through and then they'll dedicate it to the city in anyway. way anyway so we'll, okay so, we'll there's so there's just the ones. one share and we're trying to talk to Safeway, but that's not. <laughs> I was going to imagine that's not as easy as it sounds. But like any of the things that you have planned impeded by the fact that Safeway has that share still? Uh, no, because um, it's, it's no, real clear, but it's, it's a legal precedent that the ditch company can substitute water in intra ditch. Um, so um, Longmont happens to own the South Flat Reservoir, which is you're driving down um, Hover Road. It's the reservoir on the west side, um, just south of the creek. Or you, if you look out to the west, mm -hmm. you can see a big red of South Flat Reservoir. We own the water rights in that. We would put water into the for that one share. Um, of course, they can't use it because it's a parking lot <laughs> at Safeway. They have, they, they have A, nowhere to irrigate, and B, no way to get the water from the ditch to that property. That was all taken out by development 30, 40 years ago. But if something happened, um, we could pump out of that. And the ditch company said that's what... Ditch company plans the head gate, the diversion dam for the head gate at Golden Ponds is rapidly deteriorating. And the company's not gonna pay a million dollars to rebuild that diversion structure. So the company says, anybody wants water downstream, they're gonna get it out of the South Flat Reservoir anyway. So that's that's pretty well determined. So yeah, we're not worried about any other. The, the county fairgrounds was the only one that we wanted, wanted to make sure we, we cleaned up at this point. Any other questions? Dan, any comments? You're muted. No, Roger. No questions. I'm good. Thank you. Okay. So we want to make a motion? So uh, put forward a motion that we recommend to City Council that they approve the exchange agreement as written, I guess. For a second. If you could make it in substantial oh. form. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I'm trying to be too good. So in, in substantially similar to what is written. Second. Second. Okay. Second. <coughs> All in favor? Saying aye. 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 Okay. All right. Fair enough. All right, items from staff, uh, Alex? Yeah, and unfortunately I apologize, Alex had a, a personal issue come up and not able to attend the board meeting today, so I'm gonna <laughs> pinch it for you. Alex? I'm Alex today. <laughs> okay. um, so what we wanted to do, um, we've been asked to look at um, the possibility of increasing a little bit on our water rental program. Um, we, and, and to be real honest, we're, go, we're going through a rate study this summer, so anytime there's a rate study, <laughs> you know, is there, is there other ways of offsetting some of the 
some of the rate increase. We know there will be a rate increase, um, primarily driven by all the stuff Joe and Holly's doing. <laughs> all, uh, a lot of, lot of, you know, a lot of work we need to do on the system to, to keep it, maintain that asset, and certainly good that we do that. Um, so um, we've been asked to do that. I've been, what we tried to do is kind of give the, you know, ride up the flavor. There's a lot, a number of different areas that we do water rental. Um, you know, we work with the school district. Um, we have a historical leaseback program for properties and annex that dedicate their water to develop right away. Um, we have city-owned properties. Um, but really the, the majority, the biggest dollars we get is what we call our, our long-term water rental, water supply agreements. Um, and that is because um, the cost we charge for that is set by a rate study, um, which will happen with this other rate study. But it's in the six, like right now, it's six hundred and forty-two dollars an acre foot, um, compared to you know, say if you're some of the other programs where it's you know tens of dollars per acre foot, and that's primarily because most of the other water is not fully consumable, and um, not what? not fully consumable water, um, and so it, the the, the long-term and the and the the biggest value is the long-term. It is mainly used by people who have augmentation plans. Um, and when you have an augmentation plan, you have to be able to prove to the state that you have water for however long it takes your impact to the stream. Somebody pumps a well, it might take anywhere from one year to five years for that impact to finish it in the stream. And so you have to show the state you got water five years out. Um, and so that's where our programs come in and very valuable. Um, we, we've been looking at the um, programs we have and um, one difficulty we have, or two um, reasons, but one difficulty we, we have in, in moving forward with much more, um, certainly we're going to, staff is going to go out and, and try to look at the possibility of gaining additional water rental to help offset um, the impact of, of rate increases. But there's a couple areas that make it a little more difficult for Longmont um, to do. Now, the authority to, to lease rate falls underneath our city charter. 11.1 um, which basically allows us to lease, lease water. Um, but also, um, in code, we have a few restrictions um, that I wanted to just discuss with the board. We've not talked with our, our legal department yet, and I didn't even want to, I wanted to get, in, I wanted to get the reaction and input from the board before we talk about these two things. They are policy decisions we made in the past for very, very good reasons, um, but I guess we want to find out if they're if we still want to continue that policy. The first is we have an area we call it the water supply review zone. And that's basically an area, um, Highway 66, I-25, County Line Road, County Line Road, right here by Longmont, and then Highway 52 on the south. That area um, it was urbanizing. Some of it is Longmont planning area it was being urbanized by other entities, which was in conflict with our planning, our, our, our comprehensive plan. And so um, in the past, we said, we're not going to um, lease any water in the water supply review zone or to any entities who supply water into the water uh, supply review zone. I think that's a very good one. And I would suggest in terms of the zone, that we keep that, we, we shouldn't lease any water <coughs> in, in that area where uh, we want to urban, we want to develop through our comprehensive plan. Um, the way it was written though is that it's to any entity. The, the thinking was, well, yeah, if we rent it to an entity and they say, yeah, we're going to use it down by gun barrel, you know, that really frees up other water of that entity that they might move into the water. That's, that's why we wrote it fairly strictly. 
Um, but the fact is that, uh, ironically, Left Town or Little Thompson Water District goes this, serves into that area. Central Wild serves uh, Firestone, which s serves in that, or grows in, in that area. Left Town Water District um, serves in the south part of that. When, when you draw a box around, so Little Thompson goes clear up to Arkans, which is by Horse Tooth Reservoir. Um, left hand goes clear down to Louisville, Lafayette, Boulder on the south. Um, Central Weld goes out to Kersey, east of Greeley. And so basically, if you draw, we, we can't lease to anybody from Horse Tooth Reservoir to Broomfield, from Kersey, east of Greeley to Continental Divide, <laughs> um, which has really limited our ability to, to enter any leases. So, my first question would be um, that I, I believe I understand that policy, but we may want to consider um, changing it to we can't serve in that water supply review zone. But if Little Thompson came and said, hey, we need water um, up by Johnstown, you know. Um, would, would we then be able to lease water if, if we can show that it was going, it was not going in that water supply zone? So that would open up uh, an area. I'm not worried, and we're not advocating to do that or not to do that, other than that would open up the ability to lease water. Where, where are our, what are our major leases that we have today? I mean, Significant ones. Um, really, honestly, there's one big one, and that's the one on the next issue. We'll talk about that. Mm -hmm. It's called A and W Water. Actually, was here in Longmont. The, the principals lived here in Longmont. Um, they they op operate out of Fort Lupton, and uh, they have a number of wells on the South Platte River that they have to augment because they're pull out of priority. And so they lease water from us, goes down the St. Rain, hits the Platte River over by Platteville, which is high enough up for them to get credit at Fort Lupton. That's about a 600 acre foot, and it's a, you know, on a range of like $400,000 a year. But it, um, it, it expires in 2028, and by, so, so well, I'll go ahead and go on the, sec the second issue we have in our, or second, language we have in our code is that we won't lease any oil and gas interests. Now, um, the a and Water, we know they're augmenting their wells, so you could technically argue it's not going to oil and gas, but their wells, they pump some of that water doesn't get oil and gas, and we know that. And so, um, by the current language, it says, you know, we can't lease the oil and gas, um, it, and it, does, it didn't apply to existing, you know, we didn't have to try to get out of that lease, but it applied to an extension of the lease. So in 2028, we will not be able to extend that lease, and that's a hit of about $400,000 for the water fund. We'll have to increase water rates by $400,000 um, if that lease goes away. Uh, and why, why is it that we can't do that? <coughs> because they serve the oil and gas. Yeah, when was that decision made that we wouldn't lease to oil and gas? Well, that's been on the books for probably at least 10 years. Really? Um, it, it's been on there for a while. Okay. Um, <coughs> uh, <coughs> council decision, they're saying? Was, yeah, council made that decision. Okay. They, did, they directed staff to bring an ordinance. <laughs> saying that you can't lease oil and gas. And that, um, and, and I guess what we're asking for is the input, you know, should we um, just not worry about it, leave that in place, um, or should we consider, you know, you make a decision and then 10 or 15 years later, is, it, is that decision still pertinent? Is it still a good decision? Well, and there's this leapfrogging process with the water, right? I mean, we, we're not providing water directly to the oil and gas folks. 
Right. But yet we're providing water to somebody that does provide water to the oil and gas folks, right? So, and I mean, the way that the policies are written here, I don't know if they're vague enough that you kind of squeeze in with providing the water to the people that provide the water, you know? <laughs> or, I mean, but I mean, there's a spot here, provisions requiring accounting of such water to prevent such use, right? I mean, that's, that seems like, yeah. sorry, but if you're providing water to somebody that's providing water to somebody, you need to account for that, and you're responsible for the end place, or the, the end use, right? Yeah. And um, so, yeah, something would have to be done, I think, in order to continue with this particular um, agreement. And that's a, that's a, I was gonna ask who, is that, that falls into this long-term um, lease category that's here. It does, right? yeah. It's so that's four hundred thousand out of the nine hundred thousand that comes in. Yeah, it's about half of it. Yeah. Um, another big chunk of the, that money, <coughs> three hundred thousand or so, is uh, Central Colorado Water Conservancy District, and they're like 95, 98 percent ag water. They, they, their program is to augment out of priority agricultural weapons. So we're, we're okay with our lease with them, and that won't get that won't go away. So does it, does A and W their their how much of their portfolio, let's say, is related to oil and gas? Oh, it gets it gets really squirrely that way. Um, so when we first made the lease, or probably the first half of the lease, it was probably ninety percent oil and gas. Um, uh, the, the water industry um, realized the oil and gas folks had money, so they charged pretty high rates, which drove the oil and gas industry away from water providers uh, to ditch irrigation ditches. They, they originally had to take, in 2005, 2010, they had to take bulk water out of fire hydrants. They needed that clean of water to, to make their, um, their um, fracking fuel. Then they learned how, I assume just probably a pot of treat, uh, uh, an on-site <coughs> they learned how to get raw water and, and use that. And then they even went further to where, so then they were leasing a lot of effluent out of the cities and, and like Longmont. Well, then they went to uh, ditch companies, and the ditch company says, yeah, we want to make money. So the ditch companies would leasing the water out of their ditch and then by take by exchange CBT water and use that to do the ditch. Because you can't use CBT in oil and gas outside the district, but you can use the ditch water arguably. I mean it, it, it got quite a ways down the road. Um, so um, the oil and gas industry um, then started developing a lot of their so there isn't as nearly as big a market for the oil and gas industry because they've developed their own water supplies. They, you know, they needed it. They needed water. And so they, they started building aug augmentation programs, buying, buying water rights. Uh, and so they have quite, a, quite their own system set up. But um, yeah, so, so, you know, that, and we're not arguing to eliminate. I think that's our community would not probably be happy if we eliminated they eliminated that. But um, well, are you, are, you, are you basically saying we're trying to reduce our lease agreements? No, we're trying to. We're, we've been asked to increase. <coughs> see if we can increase. It. What I'm doing, and we're going to try to do that. But there's three big things that make it hard for us to do that, and I want to. Highlight all three of those and see if any one of the three we want to relax a little. And maybe not, you know, maybe we're fine. I, you know, our job is to provide water to the citizens of the long run, not, <laughs> not anywhere else. So if, if we want to um, keep it the way it is, we don't have a very nearly as big or robust uh, water rental program as we used to, partially because. But as we change our lease agreements or decrease the amount we lease, we're talking about impacting the rate? Yes, if we don't, 
the, the lease of that water helps keep the leases <coughs> down. Well, I mean, naturally, would, wouldn't we want to keep the rates down? Um, yes, that's what I've been asked to do. Okay, well, <laughs> and that's, I mean, what I'm trying know, to, that's what I want to talk about. I don't know what anybody wants rates to be in. You know, we've hit water rates pretty significantly over the last whatever number. Yeah, last 20 years or so. I, yeah, my, my take would be if we have a choice of doing something to minimize the increase in water rates, why not? Okay. I, I'm just... Yeah, I think Ken's got about to outline three things that say, here's the reason <coughs> that there's going to be complications <coughs> towards that goal. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. yeah. These, these three things. And the last one is, is really our own, that's between staff and water board. Um, we used to do 20-year leases, and we decided that was a little... How can any of us look out 20 years? <laughs> so we, we changed that in conversation with the Water Board to 10 years. And so we haven't been entertaining any leases longer than 10 years. When did you decide that? Um, we probably decided that in 2005. Yeah. 2000 to 2005. Okay. Water Board, water board at, you know, okay. had All a right. conversation. Right. And, but it's, it's just, it's just, uh, you know, I mean, there's no code. We don't change code or anything like that. Um, the longer the lease is, the more people out there who are on law, on augmentation plans that really need the water way out, um, they would be more interested in a longer term lease. So it's 10 years is the max? Yeah, 10 years is the maximum okay. we'll entertain right. right now. Um, our city code used to say 20 years. But, or city charter, it was amended. Um, it now is 30 years, and, and I don't think I'd be comfortable with a 30-year lease. Um, but for the right lease, we may want to consider a 10-year. Um, again, it, it it wouldn't happen unless the water board looked at it and said we're comfortable with that, and, and how we come up with it. But um, so that's the three things: is is the water supply review zone the um, no leasing to oil and gas and limiting it to 10-year leases. So if we want to relax any one of those, not asking for a recommendation today in terms of, I want to go to council and ask them about that, but um, if, if we want to relax any of those, then I would, we would work, um, we'd look at the language that we would need to change. Other than 10 years, we can decide that right now. But, um, for the other two, we'd need to look at the language, work with the legal department to come up with the revised language, and then we would bring that back to Water Board for a review and recommendation to Council. I didn't want to. I didn't want to go through the whole um, effort <laughs> if there was not an appetite for relaxing any of that. Well, what's staff's position? You think you think we should just leave it the way it is? Um. You know, we need some input here. If yeah. if if, if um, I would at least review it. I really would. Knowing knowing that um, that is the biggest impediment to, to leasing the water. Um, and and uh, especially, you know, again, I would not get rid of the water supply review zone. I would just better define it. And that's in my mind. That's the big one. The oil and gas, I don't know. I, I just don't think the community would have an appetite for changing that yet. There's a lot of stuff going on with oil and gas still right now at the state level and, and a lot of issues. So I guess for me, I would better define the water supply reason, narrow it down to be only the zone. I would probably leave oil and gas as it is. And the 10 years, I'd say, yeah, we would at least entertain some. Then don't have to say, yeah, we'll accept it, but uh, if, if we were a little more free on that. If it came up, and I will not guarantee it one will come up, but that's, that's kind of where I would be. I don't know if anybody else wants to weigh in on it. <laughs> well, I, you know, I'm, if we don't change anything, is that a big issue? Um, not a huge issue. I, I do believe it will have great impacts. We'll, I think, well, we won't be able to renew. The end of lease, and we won't be able to get similar leases like that. Which you said was 2028, which might 
goodness gracious, it's like just three years from now. Like yes, years it's within the reason it, it, our our water rate studies are usually you know four four to five years out. What what we're setting. We usually set, I think it's three or four years, four years, I think. Generally four years we set, and we're, we're looking at a kind of a 20-year window when we're looking at the rates uh, for expected expenditures. Um, we, we would definitely put the a and lease. In yeah, it, it the, puts it right, right. <coughs> I, I was around for the location um, area situation, um, remembering it all, and I've got a speak to it and say that we did actually intentionally define that as a, a mechanism of not letting somebody do a switcheroo and just move yeah. their water. And so I'm not wild about that. I mean, I think the oil and gas for me is kind of a, yeah, no thanks. No to, no to change there. Um, but I'm not feeling wildly excited about changing the review area either and the firmness of that definition. Um, kind of a stick in the mud. And you know, I love low rates, or I love riding herd on the rates, but this is one of those cases where it's kind of like money for values. Um, and that just, that's where that one aligns with me. I will say that the length of the lease, if we wanted to go for longer, I would definitely entertain longer leases. I'd be open with that. Um, and that's something a lot of board can definitely do that's, I don't think, a, a high regret. I think we could, that would be a low regret change. Um, I wasn't around for the water supply review zone discussion, and I'm I'm still a little lost, admittedly, about exactly what those restrictions are and what the rationale for them are. And so I I'd, I'd like to maybe chat about those a little bit more at some point in the future sure. um, to kind of further uh, clarify this discussion for sure. Um, I do foresee, you know, I mean, I, I could foresee a situation where even if we said, well, you know, water, yes or no within a particular zone, then we run into the same problem that we're running into with the oil and gas folks, which is just, well, we give some people some water and then they displace that water for other water elsewhere and now we're back in the same boat that we were in, right? Or, or that, does it, um, does it, fit with the, with the heart or, or the kind of soul of a, of a particular regulation or, or restriction or, or policy um, when people are just kind of moving stuff around anyway and kind of rearranging uh, to make, to kind of put up appearances or something. Um, my biggest question though is like, what collectively, the, the all of the leases combined, especially the long-term leases that apparently are more at question here. Um, how much does that offset uh, um, rates, right? So, you know, if I pay, I don't know, whatever the number is, $40 on my water bill or something, um, and do I pay without any of the leases at all, do I pay 38 or do I pay, or I'm sorry, do I pay 42 or do I pay 65, you know? Like, is there a way to get that number, right? Yeah, I mean, we can get you the exact number. Yeah. I'm gonna generally say it's about a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> a dollar per year or a dollar per month? A dollar, a dollar per month. Bill? Uh, no. It's about $40 <coughs> million dollars for our overall water budget, and this is about a million dollars. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, so, Dollar month, I guess. So the amount, I mean, to me, and I know that these things add up, right, but like the amount of effort that you put into a discussion is commensurate to the amount of impact that that, that the result will have, right? And so, you know, if it's some, if it's 1% of your bill, if it's 5% of your bill, if it's 50% of your bill, right, like then I would scale the amount of effort that we put into this, I'd say, to that. To, to whatever that is, I guess. But and keep in mind, of the approximately million dollars, half of that will still be in. So right. the actual incremental part is probably even left, probably 50 cents. <laughs> but are there changes that you'd like to make? I mean, if we don't change anything, what's the downside of that? 
Um, I don't think there's any downside at all. I mean, uh, other than certainly a slight decrease, um, a most likely decrease. It doesn't mean if we push, we can't fit in these criteria and still these, you know, we first off have to have the surplus water. You know, we don't want to lease anything we need. Um, uh, so uh, it's a little hard to say for sure. Yeah, there isn't, I don't believe there is a downside other than a slight, you know, other than a slightly lower ability to lease water. Um, Are there other leases for the potential leases out there that would replace our current leases? So like, do you have people calling you all the time and you're like, oh, sorry, we don't have any more leases available? Or is it? No, is there we used to get a lot of calls, but we haven't got calls for quite a while. Um, I would be very hard pressed to, to lease all 600 feet of the NW water. Very hard. Um, I, you know, on the margin, I think we could lease a bunch of it. Just don't know. <laughs> um, we just wanted to do, you know, do our best effort. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and and, but on the other hand, we don't want. You know, we really felt this was a policy issue of uh, what what the community wants, and we we feel this is what the community wants. These these restrictions. But uh, other than the tenure, right? We might want to think of. We, the board's okay with it. Doesn't mean we have to enter into the agreement, but we might bring it up. Five and all continue for you if somebody wants it. I know Central would like for the 10 years. There was an issue with that with, um, I might get my acronym out, but it was it a, PRP, a PRPA or whatever? Um, what is it? So, I'm sorry. Um, the power folks that we have a lease with, right? There was a long, it was a longer lease. Oh, uh, it it sounds Todd, Todd, yeah, okay. Fiesco. So, yeah, Fiesco, sorry. Yes. Todd's thing, for a long time, I remember him always mentioning this, the length of this lease. And there was, I can't remember exact details, but we do have something there that was a contention. Yes, um, uh, we, we have that exchange agreement as part of our water supply oh, it's portfolio. Okay. The lease was a 75-year lease entered into about 20 years ago, so now it's about a 50-year lease, but it has a 15-year opt-out. Either okay. party okay. can opt out with a 15-year notice to the other. So Todd's, and I totally understand what he's saying. That's really a 15-year lease. Oh, because and it, was, and it, it was deemed as a benefit to us. Yeah. yeah, and so we needed to. Yeah, it's really a one the lease as an exchange. Yeah, and we exchange. They give us CBT water. We give them that fluid right. out of the right. plant. And okay. um, so. And in our supply plan, we were counting that as supply. as real water. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and and really, it's fifteen year water. Right. Yeah. Okay. And that's that was the contention: is how should it be counted? Got it. Not was there in something inherently funky about yeah. the lease? Okay. And, or and the duration. I mean, it sounds like duration, but it was mostly about whether or not it was supply. Whether it was yeah. water. Yeah. And a lot of that water comes out of Union Reservoir, and so we still have that. Whether it's the effluent or the Union Reservoir, we still have that water. And we could do a different type of exchange, <coughs> or we could build a public <coughs> pipeline. And so we would, you know, part of the thought is it doesn't go away, the water doesn't go away. We just a lot harder for us to use it. <laughs> We'd have to figure out how to use that water um, in our system, you know, to exchange it up, up from the union to to be able to use it at the plants. So. Anyway, hopefully I. <laughs> so so where are we? You know, I'm, I'm still. If, if nothing changes, it's not going to be the end of the world. Or no, it's not. Um, not at all. Um, uh, I'm kind of hearing. A little okay if we bring something in slightly longer in 10 years. I'll try not to do 20 or 30, but you know, some. Uh, but other than that, I think we're. Oh, if everybody's okay with the keeping the policies the way they are, we'll we'll go out. We'll see if we can lease more water, and if we can't, we can always look at it again. You know, there's no. We'll find that out. Dan, you've been listening to all this. You still there? Yep. Any comments? 
No, I'm, I'm good with much of this. I know there are certainly advantages to a tenant to have those longer leases, especially when they have property or capital equipment investments on those properties. So I'm good with longer. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a problem with something longer than 10 years. Longer, okay. I mean, you just decided fiasco. I mean, that's a long lease. I think it's in favor of, I mean, good for both of us. So I don't have a problem with that, but if we don't change anything else, I don't have a problem with that either. Okay. Cool. Anybody else? All right. Did you get an answer from us? Oh, I'm sorry, what? Did you get an answer? From I did, us? yes. No, I absolutely did. Yeah, okay. no, that's exactly what I wanted. Was just the conversation is very helpful to me. All right. Hope, are you still here? <laughs> Boy, you've been awfully quiet today. I know. You've been good. You've been, been behaving. Do you want to hear from the special guests first so that they can have their like full presentation? Because I can present at a different meeting if you'd rather. Say that again. <laughs> Do you want to hear from our special guests first? Because and then we can postpone my presentation. I want to make sure that they have enough time to well, for do you conversation. Think, do you think they should go first? I do. Okay. <laughs> hey, I don't see anybody arguing with that. Okay. Why don't we do that? If you guys are ready. Yeah. Oh, well, that's fine. Um, so yeah, Heather's pulling up the quick presentation here. So I'm Joe Mahalski, um, engineering operations administrator. Um, and Holly Valenta, senior civil engineers here also. We're just going to give a couple of updates on a couple of projects. Um, so I'll be talking about the uh, Forbay at the Nelson Flanders Water Treatment Plant. Holly will be talking about the Mercer St. Fernie Pipeline Rehab. Um, just a couple of challenging projects that we're taking on right now. Um, so just a couple of pictures you can see here. So on the left is the, uh, the picture of the, the reservoir, the Forbay. Um, Nelson Flanders is kind of um, to the lower lower right um, corner of that same picture, uh, the treatment facility. So basically the four bay uh, was put into operation when Nelson Flanders was constructed in 2005 and it's never really been taken down since that time. Um, and we started to notice some algae coming into the plant. Um, not too much taste and odor issues, um, more operational issues. It was clogging some of our equipment. Um, so uh, when the uh, facility was constructed, there is a four-bay bypass pipeline um, that goes kind of along the south side of the, uh, of, of the reservoir and into the plant so that we can take it down. Um, again, it's just different operations than what we've been used to out there. So it was operationally challenging. We don't have the storage of that four-bay, and that four-bay also allows us to uh, um, you know, pace the flow coming into the plant a lot easier. Um, it mixes all of our raw water sources. So it's just a really nice feature. Um, um, so basically for the past two months, we've been in this bypass to, to drain it. And you can see on the right hand side there, um, just a snapshot of some of the uh, algae that we were seeing in there, it pretty much covered the entire bottom. Um, so it was fairly extensive. Um, and it's been dried out now, a couple of months. Um, but in the meantime, um, up along the north side of the four bay, there's a supply ditch there. Um, and there's also a, a feature of the, of the four bay, a dam structure, a, a tow drain. And that tow drain is supposed to intercept um, any leakage, any water, um, and, and give us some sign that there's um, some sort of an issue with the four bay. Um, we do have some seepage up on that north side. We've had it for probably the past 10 years, but there wasn't anything coming through that tow drain. So even in the uh, yearly inspections by the state dam engineer, you know, something to keep an eye on, make sure that we weren't saturating the northern side of that dam slope or anything. Um, and we were carrying that water away, but we didn't think it was coming from the four bay. Well, since this was the first time we took it down and since it was first operated, um, that seepage did go away. Um, so we notified the state engineer um, and we're currently working on solutions. Um, if you go to the uh, next slide. So there were a couple of holes um, and 
and you can see the one on the right, fairly significant. Um, basically the design of the four bay, there was a 16-inch um, clay liner um, when it was first constructed. So you can see um, that 16 inches is it, that, that on the right-hand side, that, that shovel um, handle and everything, it's probably you know three to four feet down. Um, and then on the left, it doesn't really show. That one's not quite as deep, but a couple of feet deep. Um, where it definitely goes um, through the clay liner. So we don't know if these are the only issues. We're kind of in the process of investigating it with our consultant. Um, but this is just a, a big challenge for the, for the operations up there right now, dealing with, um, you know, without being able to, to use the four bay for, our, for all the reasons we have been using it. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll see. We're, we're, uh, we're actually out there tomorrow to investigate these holes, dig to see what the, uh, um, um, the, the, the uh, underlying subgrade is like and how the water is being carried away. Um, there's some short-term improvements we're looking at making too so that we can put it online in the short term that the state engineer is okay with. Um, so you, you know, we'll probably be providing more updates as we get further along with this, but uh, just one of the challenges where we took it down for algae and we found that there were, you know, some the causes for, for some of the leaks out there were from this four bay, so got to take care of them. So how long has this been out of commission? Two months now. Two months and so again, not the most ideal time period to be doing this, uh, you know, um, with the uh, um, runoff and everything that's, uh, you know, snow melt, um, our peak demands, obviously going through the summertime, but it's also, we're learning a lot about the uh, facilities operations, what, what it can do. We just have to be uh, more in tune on a daily basis of, you know, turbidities and everything coming in from the, uh, from the raw water sources, because um, we used to be able to attenuate all those in the four bay, whereas now it's kind of coming more directly into the facility. So putting that back into operation is somewhere in the future? Or well, you know, uh, we'll see you what, yeah, we'll see what we find. We're having discussions with the state engineer right now um, on doing some near-term improvements on the north side where that seepage was, um, some less expensive um, options that they're comfortable with so that we can continue to evaluate. We would like to fill this after we um, repair these holes and just see what that did to the leakage um, and, and take it step by step because the long-term solution may be you know, a little bit uh, more expensive than what we're doing just in the short term. But uh, this is a jurisdictional dam, um, so there is some risk to the uh, facility. You know, if there was some sort of a break, you know, the, the facility and there's some uh, there's some downstream residents too as you get closer to Highway 66, but um, you know it. We've had this leakage for 10 years. It has steadily gotten a little bit worse over that time period, um, but uh, we'll see what we find as we continue to investigate. Okay. Um, any any questions? <coughs> Your plan is a resolve the issues as you see them and uh yeah we're working with a consultant in the state you know uh dam engineer so we're working as a, as a team to try to figure out the best path forward um to get step by step okay. um figure out what's going on with all the geotechnical uh, uh information in the area you know this is not directly related to this but i have to ask the question that we kept hearing about changing the capacity of the plant is that something that is kind of on the sideline or any? So the expansion project, yeah. Um, yeah. so that has been delayed um, because of the uh, uh, cost escalation. So again, we had the original estimates from our consultant to expand um, Nelson Flanders. Um, and the reason for that expansion, the driver was really asset management. Wade Gaddis is another plant that we have that was built back in the early 80s um, that has structural issues um, and operational issues. Um, so uh, we we're gonna, you know, basically take that capacity to build that plant at Nelson Flanders because Nelson Flanders was always built with expansion in mind. Um, 
So it was replacing existing infrastructure um, at Gaddis, bringing it to Nelson Flanders. Um, again, the original estimates were in the $50 million range back in 2019. Um, again, through what we've seen in the economy from 2020 to 2023, we were in design for that and saw it real time because we had we were doing that project delivery design build. So we had a contractor in the room with the consultant, the engineer. Um, cost increased um, basically the same scope and project to um, $97 million. So it's similar percentages of what we were seeing on other projects, it's just this one is such a huge dollar amount, that percentage um, really ballooned. So Montgomery Tank, um, which is at the corner of North 53rd and Highway 66, was another parallel project we were uh, wanting to take care of. We can still afford that project, so council kind of, uh, uh, we did a CIP amendment in November of last year to move a lot of the money from Nelson Flanders into Montgomery Tank to take care of that project first, see where we stand after we get that project completed, and see um, what additional funding we're going to need for, for uh, uh, you know, for getting that Wade Gaddis capacity over to Nelson Flanders. Is Wade Gaddis still usable? Is it usable? Uh, it's it's it's, still it's on the line. It's there. <laughs> okay. um, you know, we do need to put some money into it to make sure it. We haven't operated that since 2011. Yeah. Um, but you you wouldn't put money. And we weren't. We hadn't been putting money into it because the decision was made to put the capacity over at Nelson Flanders. So. Okay. So it's a. Uh, we're juggling a lot. All right. All right. And then Holly will talk about her project, the North St. Clair Pipeline Mining Project. Yeah, so in addition to the four bay being down, I've taken down the North St. Clair Pipeline for a lining project. And this project, is a, it's actually a fairly short section of pipeline, about 1,600 feet, and it's located near the intersection of Highways 36 and 66 near Lyons. Um, it's actually a lining project instead of an open cut replacement project. Um, and as you can see from this aerial, it's because there's just a lot of stuff that we would have to deal with. We'd have to deal with seed out right away. We'd have to deal with the creek. We'd have to deal with ditches. We have property owners who have houses. We have large trees. We have potential endangered species. So there's just a lot of things that we would potentially have to deal with. And so that's why we did a lining project, which is an interior. Um, uh, it's an interior we have. Next slide, please. So here's the design and the difference between kind of replacing, digging up, replacing um, us, all of the pipeline versus how we're doing it now. We have three different excavation sites, if you can click. Um, so the, the great thing is, is that we only have three excavation sites. These are permanent um, pits as part of the project. Um, we do have two to temporary pits because we have some problems with the pipe that we figured out we have to actually um, dig down do an external repair um, in one location we're not able to do a robot internal repair at that location there's another place where we have a 24 inch t we have to actually cut that out and i'll show you a, a slide or a picture of that um, excavation site and a couple more slides but um, sorry you're, you're good. Um, but the, as you can see from uh, the previous slide, the whole idea is to really reduce the amount that we're actually disturbing in this area. So uh, you're good. Next slide. Um, so how do we know that this pipe is bad? Um, last year we actually did, uh, we dug down in our mid pit, so the middle pit, that center pit, we cut a window into the pipe, we sent a robot camera upstream and downstream, and the goal is to figure out whether or not the lining would be a, a good alternative, as well as to try and find cracks and holes like you see on the right hand side. So we know that this pipe um, needs help, and um, that, that lining is hopefully going to help prevent um, things like on, that, on the very right hand side. So this was taken while the pipeline is down, and so uh, that's just groundwater re-entering, basically water that whenever this pipeline was operating at 90 pounds, basically would have been just shooting out of the pipe. So once we took the pipeline down, the water that we, <laughs> that was exiting our pipe whenever it was under pressure and online, just started coming back in. Um, 
in a, uh, next slide, please. Um, in addition to that interior inspection, we also have uh, our property owners in this section of pipe. We've had three different uh, leaks surface within the last few months. Um, nice ponding, pooling. You, you actually see some nice bubbling action there on the surface. So we know that this pipe uh, really does it does have a lot of uh, uh, holes in it, and that the lining project is is going to be really helpful for for this section of pipe. Next slide. Uh, we've been doing this project for since roughly the beginning of June. It's going to be about three months long, um, so hopefully, kind of like Joe was talking about coming back and telling you about the four bay. Um, in a few months, hopefully I'll be able to come back and give you uh, a little more information as we progress through the project. Uh, just a few slides to show that the size of the excavations that we're, our permanent excavations that we're dealing with, as well as just a, a look within those pits as well. Um, what we're doing, the one like the one with the yellow, um, that is actually one where we welded on a flange. That's one of our permanent uh, pits. And so that is where either the liner is going to be coming in. Basically, we have the three pits. And the liners are going from the initial pit or the beginning pit to the middle pit. And then we have a second liner that's going from the middle pit to the, to the final pit. We're not able to line the entire section at one time. We've got to do it in two sections because it is a 24-inch pipe. So there are limitations to the length that we can actually line at one time. And then the um, rightmost photograph is where we actually had to cut out a 24-inch T. We're not able to line through uh, the T, so we had to cut out the T and put in a straight section of pipe. Um, so that's, we, we haven't gotten that far on the project, but we are, we are making progress. And um, hopefully next time I'll be able to come back and show you some pictures of our robot that's going to go in and uh, grind down. <coughs> we have plugs within the, uh, we know that we have holes. They've been plugged in the past. The robot will go in and grind down those plugs. We also, the robot will also go in and grout holes um, to prevent water. The water that's coming in now, it'll go in and, and grout those, those areas. Um, hopefully be able to give you some of those, those photos as well as the lining actually being installed. And um, yeah. So a few challenging projects hitting us at the, at the same time. It just <laughs> aging, <laughs> aging, <laughs> aging, <laughs> aging <laughs> the structure. What are the ramifications when this sent me out of commission? What? So again, operationally, without the four bay, it yeah. makes operations more difficult at the plant. Uh, we do have three other sources coming into the plant. Um, the original thought was, why would we take this down during peak flow in the summertime? Well, we have all of our sources available in the summertime, whereas in the wintertime we don't. Okay. Um, so that's why we are doing it now, um, just because we have some redundancies that we wouldn't have in the quote peak um, wintertime period. Um, but yeah, just makes things a little bit more operationally challenging at the at the treatment facility. But um, we have some good uh, good operators, and we've changed some programming around too um, for how we're operating right now. And we're using some Highland Ditch that we haven't used, um, and, and those pumps, and we've made some improvements to that system, a new flow meter, which is working really well for giving us good flow data. So there's been some some positives that have come out of this. Learned good, good, good learning experiences. So you were going to come back on another date? Yeah, when you're sure. Are you got a date in mind? Um, I think towards the end of summer would probably be best when we are done with the North Saint Marine project, and we should we should really know where we're at, what the path forward is on the four bed at that point too. And I can also hopefully give you a good update on Price Park. Um, yeah, you got a lot of good things too. coming in the end of summer. So I think this <laughs> summer we're we're going to make it happen. happen. We're going to be busy. Well, yeah, no. <laughs> so towards the end of the summer. Okay. Right, uh, August, September time frame, probably. Right. Any, any questions? Dan, any questions? There. Roger, I'm good. Thank you.
When are you coming back to Longmont, Dan? <laughs> you going to be up there all summer? <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Anything else? All right. So, Hope, you want to? Sure. I can do it in five minutes. I can try. <laughs> Give it a go. All right. Um, so I just wanted to come and update you guys that we had our first annual, hopefully it's an annual thing, uh, Longmont Water Fair. Um, so Heather is going to pull out my slides. No, it's that, that's the one page or the oh, presentation. Yeah, um, that's okay. I'll start talking. Okay. So um, we basically decided to host something similar to the water festival that we used to have with the fifth grade um, in, the, in the school district, um, but we wanted to make it a um, community-wide event, open to intergenerational folks, um, and aligned with the city's commitment for responsible water management and stewardship um, we wanted to create something that educates the community about where our water comes from where it goes and why we should care so our main goal is to like i said an intergenerational event based on the statewide water education action plan um, and the city of longmont's um, water efficiency Plan. Uh, we also really wanted to get feedback on our efficiency plan update and um, I wanted to try something new and by not doing like a community open house and kind of getting it as like a family event and then getting folks who are already at that family event to give us feedback on our update. Um, we also wanted this to be not a regular resource fair, we wanted it to be focused on um, it's not in there, Heather. I sent it to you. Oh, she email. Sorry. No worries. Um, focused on hands-on, kinesthetic, and art-focused learning. So we integrated some local artists um, and performances, including an Aztecia water blessing, local inter interpretive dancing, and African drumming. Um, and again, our main objective is to educate attendees about global water, Colorado water, Longmont water, and then water conservation and how folks can interact with water in a more in a, in a more efficient way um, so our main goals the increased knowledge of local water sources watersheds and their relationships we have I have a photo so I'm, I'm gonna keep talking but yeah, I do want you guys to see it up. It. yeah no you're good Heather no worries um, and then on this one pager We've got our short-term and um, outcomes, the increased knowledge of local water sources, their relationships, those types of things. Um, and then on this third page is the learning objectives that we identified as a team. Um, it's scroll down. It's not that one. Yeah. Let me hold on one second. Yeah, I'll just send it. Here's the presentation. I found it. Okay, thank you so much. Um, so we identified a, a handful of learning objectives and then um, strategically selected partners to educate the, the attendees on each station that those handful of learning objectives. You're good. I gotta share so Jan can see. Okay. And our theme was journey, water's journey from mountain to home. Um, here are some images the, about you know the Aztecia dancing and the water blessing, really hands-on and kinesthetic learning got a watershed um, example on the bottom left down there and then the bottom right is my favorite is the CBT system so the kids are carrying water through 
the outlet tunnel. So that's pretty cool. Um, next couple slides. Our short-term outcome, increased knowledge of local water sources, watersheds, and their relationships. Uh, we had a giant interactive mural of the Sanford watershed where folks can draw what they think live in the watershed and be a part of actively be in the watershed. Next slide. Increased knowledge of human behaviors impacting local water health and conservation. Uh, um, in very interactive models. We had um, Keep It Clean Partnership and the City of Longmont Floodplain Management. That was their slide, or the station. Increased social capital, really wanting to get folks together in one place. Um, one of the highlights is that we had between 400 and 500 people attend the event, which is double what we expected. So um, definitely achieved that social capital goal. Increased time at local watersheds. We held the event at Dickens Farm Nature Area, so the kids got to get right down in, into the water. It was high flow, so we didn't let them get in the water, but um, we let them look at it. <laughs> Increased knowledge of how water is valued across vocations and cultures. We really wanted, you can go to the next one, we really wanted folks to understand that um, water is a global phenomenon that connects us all. Um, so how other cultures value and participate in water, water in their cultures is important in an important goal. We can blaze over these because they're in our one pager. But these are just all of our event partners that we have there. Next couple of slides, we'll just skip over these. Um, every oh that one, so sorry. Every um, everything was translated and we had um, Spanish interpreters live at the event, so if any families wanted needed a, a language justice assistance, um, we had those there that they could follow them around to each station. Um, we, I, I hired grassroots art organizers to help me plan it, so um, it was really grassroots and really fueled, fueled by community and cultural influencers, which is really special and I think why it was such um, a success of an event. Um, one of the cool things that we did was um, if we did some data collection before the water fair. So our two critical water issues we wanted each person to walk away knowing was what percentage of Earth's fresh water is available for use and um, what, what watershed do we live in. And the light blue is what folks answered um, in April at Earth Day. Um, and then the dark blue is how folks answered correctly after the water fair. So we can see that our education impacts um, were successful. These are just highlights, like I mentioned, between four and 500 attendees, all the languages spoken by family, mostly English and Spanish, but we also had Russian, Hebrew, Mandarin, and Portuguese speakers. The average age of kid there was age seven. Um, and we, we created these scavenger hunts um, for folks, each, each family got a scavenger hunt when they came in, and um, like I said, each station had a learning objective, um, so they were able to um, track their learning objectives through the scavenger hunt. And then the last page of the survey, it's also headed on the back of this one, one pager, um, was where we collected data, so what percentage of fresh water is available for for use, what watershed do we live in, and um, then other demographic information, which is how we got the average age and which languages they speak. Um, and 68% of attendees contributed to this survey. So that's huge. Sorry, everyone. Okay. That definitely happened. Um, so 68% contributed to the survey, which is extremely higher than uh, most participation in public surveys. You know, that's huge. Yeah. yeah um, and then here are just some highlight photos. Um, one of the cool things uh, is, is and I just wanted to highlight the partnership that we can have when we collaborate with art and science. Um, I just feel like it's much more impactful. And so the top left is the sculpture of how 115 gallons, which is the gross gallons per capita per day in Longmont. So people can actually visualize that. Um, we've got our artists, our Aztecia um, water blessing, and then the two dot matrix 
are what I collected at my station um, just for our efficiency master plan update on what types of rebates folks most want to see um, and then what type of landscapes they would like us to pursue most. And as you can see, well, we got a, a wide range of um, feedback on our rebates, which is great, um, but the landscape choice was a clear landslide winner for um, Xeriscape water-wise landscaping. So now we know that when we decide to update our design standards and codes that um, the public is in favor of that. What day was this? This was June 9th, last weekend. Two weeks ago. Two weekends ago. And where were we? It was at Dickens Farm Nature Area. I didn't tell you guys before <laughs> because uh, the permit didn't get approved until like the week of. So I was slightly scared it wasn't going to happen all the way up until like the Monday that it happened. So. She was not very fun to be around in now. So. It was a little stressful, but I feel like this is a testament to the success of <laughs> well, I mean, well, it's also, I mean, you had double the attendance that you expected while no one, while not really advertising that it yeah, was. Yeah, I mean, we were doing some community outreach, but I had to be extra careful. So it was because you didn't have a permit, right? <laughs> I'm just trying to get the whole story here. <laughs> But it's still really good at But it's fantastic, right? Yeah, yeah, no. So it like is... if it's annual and next year we have the permit <laughs> a little sooner than then and you advertise it, maybe I mean yeah. plan for a lot a loads more people. Yeah, yeah, and I think yeah, I mean, like I said, it was double what we expected it to be. Um, and it didn't feel like it didn't feel crowded. A lot of the feedback we asked for a lot of feedback. Um, and some of the feedback was like, even though there was so many people there, it didn't feel crowded um, because we got we were outside and we were in nature. And I think people were cycling through pretty quickly. So it was good. Were you happy with the outcome? Yeah, it was better than I ever could have imagined it to be. And honestly, I attest that to partnering with the local art artists to help me plan it because they were really, if, if I had planned it, it would have been like a seminar <laughs> with like slides and maps, but like this was so great, you know, with the kids and the hula hoops and like everything was really hands-on and um, <coughs> I think the kids learned a lot, so it was super fun. Okay, great event. Yeah, thanks. Thank I'll invite you next time. <laughs> that'd be cool. <laughs> All right, that'd be nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions for Hope? Good job, folks. Thank you. It's ten after five, just to. Uh, yeah. You want to? Uh, should we skip the Windy Gap Farming yeah. Project update? I'll bring that next time. All right. And I think that pretty much covers it, does it not? I just Anybody? wanted to note the July meeting. We may cancel that. We don't have any action items. Or, uh, yeah, and that's only three weeks away so we won't guarantee well we got the cash in lieu of just i mean that's yeah, a big that's deal so why don't we take that. a month off yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know i mean that's that's a big win it is okay well you'll let us know we'll you let know. you know okay i just wanted to give you a heads up anybody else have any comments before we end dan anything else he's good all right meetings adjourned <laughs>